Have you ever wondered which store you're getting a better deal from? Yeah? Would you, able, would you be able to figure it out? You think so? Hmm? Yeah. There are some supermarkets that under the price, they give us like a little guide that says the unit rate. Have you ever heard that word, unit rate? No? Most of the time when you buy things, you buy them with several. You don't just buy one. You buy a package usually that has several items. Let's talk about, how about a, a sports drink package? that you have what, like how many? Or mixed goodies. Or mixed goodies. Or anyone else that you Trails. think of. Huh? Trail mix. Yeah. yeah, trail mix. They come in like the packages, several in a box, and you want to find out if you're getting a better deal. Like canned sodas. Or canned sodas. Okay, well, some, like I was saying before, some of the supermarkets have a little label that say what the unit rate is. Okay, so pretty much we're going to learn a little bit about how you can tell if your parents are getting a better deal if they shop maybe at a wholesale club or at a local supermarket. But not only that, have you ever wondered maybe if you're on a track team at school and who's the faster runner depending on how many laps you run? Okay, I bet you guys are really good and you can tell automatically just by watching the race you can tell who the faster runner is, right? How many of you are fast? Yeah? Okay, now I'm gonna ask this question. How many of you are fast short distance? How many of you are fast long distance? Okay, did you see the difference there? So maybe over time, over a certain amount of distance, you know, maybe Brit and, and Sergio, you might win the race. But if it's a short distance, maybe Lazaro will win the race. Okay, so we're going to start learning about this and learning about unit rate and ratios. My main objective when I was teaching the lesson comparing ratios, I really wanted the students to understand how to compare ratios. I wanted them to be able to know how to use the correct mathematical vocabulary, not simply by giving them a definition for ratio, but linking it to real world. And that's why I incorporated the kids when I was trying to teach them a ratio. And you can tell automatically, just by watching the race, you can tell who the faster runner is, right? How many of you are fast? Yeah? Okay, now I'm gonna ask this question. How many of you are fast short distance? How many of you are fast long distance? Okay, did you see the difference there? So maybe over time, over a certain amount of distance, you know, maybe Brit and, and Sergio, you might win the race. But if it's a short distance, maybe Lazaro will win the race, okay? So we're gonna start learning about this and learning about unit rate and ratios. So I'm gonna start off by giving you a worksheet. I want you to analyze one of the problems together. And I'm gonna give you some time to analyze it. Give one to each one of your group members, please. Lazro, give one to each one of your group members. Britt, give one to each one of your group members, please. Amanda. Can we put our name? Yes, please put your name at the top of the paper. And let's take a look at number one. David, can you read that for me, please? Ariel can run four laps in 12 minutes. Susan can run three laps in nine minutes. Who is the faster, fastest runner? Okay. Let's really understand what the problem is asking. What is the problem actually asking, Allie? Um, who's the faster runner? Who's the faster runner? Between um, Ariel and Susan. Very good. Very good. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to discuss this problem with your group members, okay? Take a minute to figure out to solve it and then share with your group members how you solved it. Let's take a few minutes, three or four minutes to solve that problem together.
How do you figure out they're both the same? The way I would figure out is, um, I take the, I take the actual, the actual two numbers, and I divide them. <laughs> so then, one lap, you have as as the same time as the other three. three minutes. So then I'll figure out how much time is one lap. Okay. Look and see, because I think Ali and Amanda are still not understanding. Explain it to him. Show it on paper, maybe. I really do believe in cooperative groups. It gives me the opportunity to walk around, to informally assess the students, and that way I can see where to go next, or perhaps maybe differentiate the instruction at that time based on the information that I'm gathering as I walk around. It's very important to provide different varieties and opportunities for students to interact with each other. I have seen some very unique ideas come out, and I'm going to ask for your group to pick a member to explain which way you chose to answer this question. Let's see if you came up with the right answer. Uh, who would like to go first? Next group, discuss. You want to be the speaker for your group? Sure. You guys okay with that? Great. Go. Show me, explain to the class what your group decided to do. The way I would figure it out is I would take the two numbers. A little louder, Nick. For, what I would do, I would take the two numbers for Ariel, which is 4 and 12. And then I would divide them, which would be 3. So then that's how, that's how long Ariel would take to, to one run. Um, that's how many minutes it would take for Ariel to run one lap. Excellent. Can you, can, you can you write that sentence or can you identify, can you write one lap in three minutes? Ashley, that's what you guys came up with? Excellent. Okay. And that's for... Oh, I like that you did that. That's for Ariel. Ariel, nice. Ariel. Identify. This one would be... Three divided by nine, which would be three. So again, it would be three minutes, one lap. Nice job, nice job. Excellent, you did a great job, this group. Okay, we're gonna call another group up. Thank you for participating, Nick. We're gonna call up Sergio's group. And let me ask you, is your method the same way? Did you solve it that way? No. I'm really curious. Let's see what method you chose. You, you all discussed it, right? You came up with a method. It is the same because, like, if one lap in three minutes. So, Ariel. Ran four laps, same amount, in 12 minutes. And Susan ran three laps in nine minutes. Okay, so you have identified the information from the problem. Excellent. Yeah. So one lap is three minutes, two laps will be six minutes. Three laps will be nine minutes. And four laps will be 12 minutes. Wow, very interesting. So if Susan ran one more lap, she would have the same amount as Ariel. Very interesting. You've identified a pattern. When oh. students explain how they solved the problem, they should be able to relay the steps they used and explain the mathematics behind their solution. As students progress through school, the mathematics behind their solutions should become more advanced and should influence the mathematics described in their explanation. For every one lap, three minutes. Notice that on Sergio's work, as well as Nick's group's work and Sergio's group, again, it came up. Boys and girls, that's unit rate. You've just figured out what one lap is. Three minutes. So let's bring it back to the grocery store and the supermarket. You divided here. 
you did a pattern here. If you're buying paper towels in bulk, even in the same supermarket, would it be ideal to divide maybe the price of three paper towels by three to find out what one is worth? Or should you buy the package of 12 paper towels? How do you think you can figure out, now that you know this information, what the better deal is? What would you do, Britt? Divide. Could divide, fantastic. And then how would you know which one is the better deal? Because whatever answer that you get when you divide. What are you looking for? The, the, more for less. Would, yeah, more for less. That's what you're looking for. If you're a good consumer and you want to save money, you want more product for less price. 